If you know who you want to be, you know. November 2022 results meeting. How do we do, guys? Best month ever. What's the number we ended up with? 600? 600? 600, exactly. 600, yeah. Okay, so let's get our first house. This is our third best month in a, uh, ever in a row. All right, and then in December 10th, uh, when all the checks are written out with the commissions and the rolls, well, we haven't even finished the rolls yet, total paying out is $58,000 in commissions. So Merry Christmas to you guys. All right, so it took me last you know, uh, meeting we talked about from going to a zero to 100,000, it took six and a half years. We remember we talked about that? And then one year and five months to get to 300 to 400. It only took us five months to get to 400 to 500. And how long did it take us to get to 500 to 600? One month. So the difference of going from 500 to 600, which is 100,000 difference, it used to take us six years to do that. So it kind of shows us the compound effects of being consistent because it's something that we wouldn't be able to do right away. It took us years and years and years of working hard to be able to get here. And some of the examples I could share with you guys is, you know, if you're saying like, hey, I want to get in shape, if The Rock called you and said, hey, you want to do a workout with me? Say hell yeah. <laughs> You're not ready, Jeff. <laughs> Same thing happens when people make a lot of money all of a sudden, like when people win the lottery. The reason they just go broke after a few, couple, few years is because they don't have the experience to manage that money. How much do I give my relatives? What do I do when they ask for, for me for money? They, don't, they never earned it, so they don't know how to manage that money. So you just can't. All that consistency is not there, so you just can't get the final results. So you lose all that money. Or if you just got your license and you were getting all these leads, what would happen? Reburn. They would burn. You probably hate your job because like, I can't handle all this. Like, what the heck is going on here? Like, I gotta call all these people back and I'll take you. It, these are like all these hard works of years and years and years. It's like a muscle that you developed that you're able to do more and more and more. And that's why we're able to get here. And I really wanna just, you know, Acknowledge you guys for being able to put in the amount of work you guys did because these are all skills that took years to develop. So one more time, let's get up for ourselves. I think uh, one of the things that I want to share with you guys is Thanksgiving break. The fact that we worked both Friday and Saturday helped us because if you wouldn't have, it would have been 200 voicemails and Monday would have been just customer service. So who came on a Friday or Saturday that weekend? Okay, great, so thank you very much. That really helped us out this month. Uh, another thing, what, what other things would you guys say helped us out last month? Just like the, the way the team is set up too. Mm-hmm. In what ways, maybe? Um, we have like more customer service agents and like they're like good at what they do and that's it. Bingo, I think that's a, a huge part of why we're doing so well is because Jason talked about in the last meeting too, you know, if, you're getting calls and calls and you're picking up and you're, and you're getting leads too. You want to follow up, but then you're just getting calls and you know, we have to t take care of our clients. You know, so you just sometimes, there were times before we had a customer service help where you know, he were getting some leads, but he couldn't even finish them that day because he, he had to pick up calls. So the customer service help that we're getting is huge. And I 100% agree with you, Diana, that that is one of the things that's really helping us get to the next level. Another thing, anybody? Attendance, attendance is getting better. <laughs> I'm not sure if <laughs> you can say that, uh, but uh, maybe the more people we have, when people miss, it's not as impactful. So the total hours put in is more. Uh, the average attendance is, uh, actually it was below average, but that happens in November with the change of seasons. Another thing I wanna add is the keep, you know, adaptability, okay, because I spend hours and hours on figuring out how I can make it better and implementing them and making them basically. But one thing is for me to make them, but if you guys aren't using them, what's the purpose, right? So I feel that you guys have done a great job of adapting and being open to changes on how we do things, which is sometimes not easy, I get. You know, but you guys have put the faith in me that these new systems are working. The proof of insurance cards, not the quoting, 
you know, pretty soon we're going to take payments and then they're going to be off of this list and then like there's going to be just all kinds of stuff. We're just going to be building all kinds of stuff, but adaptability has been a key thing. So customer service, I would say, and adaptability, I would say, is the second thing. So, you know, as great as we're doing, what's the one thing that I always talk about when we're doing great, what we should do? Okay, we shouldn't get, give ourselves too much credit. Never okay. be happy. Hmm? Never be happy. We should be happy. <laughs> we should be happy, but we shouldn't give ourselves too much credit, meaning what? Like to, get to get comfortable. To get comfortable or thinking, having big headed. I share my numbers or the other agency our numbers, and they're like, oh my God, you're like the best. And whenever you get that kind of stuff, then what, you, what I do is I say, no, my team is so awesome, and I'm honestly just lucky because I have the right company. Okay, because what if I just started and I didn't go with farmers? You know, very lucky, you know, I, that we have the right company that gives us the right billing right now, the right underwriting, the right commission structure, and in the right state with the right team, with your guys' work and the mindset and the training, the systems we have, and at the right time. There's so many variables that I just cannot sit here and say, hey, it's because of me. You know, and that's really the mindset we want to have here as, because, you know, Monday things could change. So when things are going good, it's very important for us to be humble and understand that uh, we're very fortunate to be in the position that we're in and give credit to others. Really just have appreciation. So I just want to take a moment to just feel a sense of gratitude for each other and the situation we're in because business does not always work this way. There's just other businesses that are going through it we have gone through it in the past, but at this very moment, our best month ever in 15 year history, I just want us to appreciate it because when you appreciate it, then you can kind of stay in the moment and then being in the moment and being present is a big part of happiness. Because, you know, you guys remember my friend Brock who visited my office, our office? Mm -hmm. His older brother got cancer, he died, then he got cancer, and he was bedridden for a whole year. And there was moments where he could tell his body was about to give up. Like he got close to dying many times during that year. And he told himself, if I ever could survive this, I'm going to thank the people I should have thanked who have helped me in my life. We're all going to get there one day. We're all going to die one day. So let's appreciate everything while we can. So I appreciate you guys. Let's get up for ourselves one more time, 600,000. All right, so we got some of these winners here. Most hours worked, who we have? Blanca, at 103%. So let's get up for Blanca. This has been a tough category for her in the past. So I just want to sh share with you guys how happy I am to see that she's able to put that 103% attendance because last couple months, even though her numbers were big, you know, I felt like she had left some money on the table. So for her to do that is someone I'm really rooting for and I'm really happy to see. Uh, the year-to-date leader on this category is Jason. We're going to get in some year-to-date categories now because it's the end of the year. Um, but what do I say when it comes to uh, attendance and being healthy? What are the three keys? How to stay healthy, number one? Exercise. Exercise. Number two? Eat healthy. Eat healthy. Number three? Sleep. Sleep. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> I say this every single meeting, so <laughs> I think you guys should get this out. The most hours on the phone? Uh, we have this agent here. We have America with 34 and a half hours. Let's get up for America. This is her fourth time in a row winning this category with the most hours on the phone. This just shows the amount of customer service and sales and the, the, the care she has for her clients. And the year to date leader of this category is Laura. <laughs> Def definitely more to come for Laura. Most phone calls, 1,098 phone calls leading this team in this category last month, but the, for the whole year, too. Let's get up for Jasmine. You definitely like making calls, huh? No. <laughs> first one to call is really important. When you get leads, if you're one of the first ones to call, well, if, if you call them right away, it's fresh in their mind. You know, if they get a lead on Saturday and we're too busy and then we call them on Monday, it's like, they're like, oh, man, never mind. Like, you know, it's not a big deal. But if they press that send button, you get a call right away, they're like, yeah, yeah, I did request a quote. 
Okay. I was thinking about that because they're scrolling and they're like, request a quote, and they're like, mm -hmm. speed is the key, making those calls are the key, picking up is the key. It's just all a game of how much you do, you know, and it's just can't do that. Well, some people have natural energy from the beginning, you know, like jazz, but this is a, a muscle that you guys are developing, like I said. Like, you know, you can't beat a rock in one year. You work out every single day, and that's how, you know, Jasmine and Laura are able to be on those phones and make those phone calls and not be tired and still get, you know, um, produce at that type of activity level because the more you do, the more you get paid. All right, and then we have most payments. Most payments, it was by three payments. Yeah. They're on those people. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys talking about, right? It's really helping us for them to be on these phones. So uh, this agent had 147, and she got 50 plus rolls and made $730 in rolls. Linda. Let's get her for Linda. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to take a guess who second place was with 144? Genesis. Genesis, yeah. <laughs> So this is her first full month being uh, qualifying for rolls, and she got 30-something, and she got $320 in rolls. So I don't think it's a coincidence that they sit next to each other. Fighting. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I meant. I feel like she's getting the learning good behaviors from Linda. It's almost like a mini, mini Linda. Yeah, the work she's ethic. She's training her, so. Yeah, she sees it, you know, like a real-life example. So uh, that's why I'm so happy for Linda, and so grateful for her for actually, you know, kind of developing a mini Linda, because <laughs> <laughs> who would want two Lindas, right? So great job uh, for both of them. Highest closing ratio, this is the highest ever. Uh, let's get up for Kelly at 45%. <laughs> now I asked her in the last meeting, and I said, hey, what do you think is helping? Uh, and like me personally, I feel that she does a great job of making them feel understood. Like, I, hey, I get you. Like, this is your situation. I understand you. And he, she gets, does a good job of letting them talk to her. She says what she is trying to do more is really showing the gratitude up front in the conversation. Thank you for giving me a try to quote you. You know, what's your name? What's your address? Thank you. Overloads on the gratitude to them. And that's what she thinks is working, which is... I love to hear because I'm all about that. You know, it's just thanking people because when you, who doesn't like to be thanked? And in sales, people want to help people that are thanking you. Or in, in human nature, people want to just help each other because if you're appreciating me, hey, I appreciate you, and you help each other out. So I think that goes with great customer service too. Just make sure we're thanking them. But in sales situation, even if they don't buy the policy, or if they do buy the policy, or even when you're not sure if they buy the policy, Let's just start off with a thank you for giving me a try. I'm going to try my best here. Great results there, 45%. We got one, two, three, four, five, six agents with their best month ever. So we're going to go through this. More on Laura, but 116,000. Let's give it for Laura. Uh, Jasmine at 97,000. Big numbers. Blanca at 87,000. Uh, Kalia at 77,000. Kalia uh, was averaging 39,000 before she got to 77,000. So that's a big jump there. You know, she just had like a breakthrough month, I feel like. Her previous best was 53,000. Uh, she's only the fourth agent ever to get over 75,000. And, you know, she's just a great salesperson. That's a big number, you know, and I'm really proud of her and happy to, for her to see that, uh, to be able to see her do that. And then we have America at 53,000. Let's get up for America. Now, for America, getting to 50,000, she was able to do it in her eighth full month of getting licensed, which makes her the fastest ever agent to get to 50,000. It was also her birthday month, so she took a four-day you know, vacation, but still able to do it. But again, working that Friday, she worked both Friday and Saturday during Thanksgiving break. Um, and she was averaging 21,000 before, and her previous best month was 36,000. So I think it's a great story for new agents also because eight months is not really that long of a time. You know, if you don't have your license right now, if you think about it, okay, eight months could be still within 2023 of how much you could get done in one year if you really work hard. Because a lot of times if you just got a license, you're like, man, 25,000, that seems like a big number. How do I ever get that? 
you know, but then get to 50,000 in eight short months, that's incredible because if you think about it, nine months ago, she was just getting rolls. Eight months later, it's $5,000 commission. So let's get it for Merca. And then we got Judith here at 24,000. Let's get it for Judith. Uh, she's, this is her fifth month in a row with her best month ever. Every single month after she got licensed. One of the things that kind of sums up her month for her was it was 655 and Jamie got a call and it was a quote. Okay, and Spanish quote and Judah was like, okay, I'll take it. 655, you're off at five minutes, but she's taking it. And, you know, I just, I just hanged out there because she didn't really need help, but I just hanged out there because I didn't want to just leave her like that, you know, only one in the office. So, but the time was done, it was like 744, 740. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then she left, she sold it, she left, and I was like, okay, cool. And I checked it out real quick. It was $4,700 premium. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Right? And the next day I told her, Jude, do you realize you made $400 in 40 minutes? I told you sales is better than school. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get up for Judith for having, because uh, you never know when it comes to sales, you know, like people get licensed and how they take advantage of that situation. But um, she's showing that she has kind of the same style as Kalia, you know, empathetic, very nice, and very uh, listening, getting them to open up, very thankful. So really, really great signs for her to come in the future. Really excited about her future. So third month finisher, we have an uh, agent that I'm a huge fan of. You guys know, you know, I always root for her. I always believe in her, probably more than she believes in herself. But last month was at 87,000. The number that stands out, again, is 1,003% attendance, over 1,000 phone calls, over 50 hours on the phone, $8,000 in commission. Let's add up her hourly and her OT. I'm really proud of her for proving to me that she can get to these numbers. So let's get her for Blanca Tapia. You guys already know who's coming up next. 1,098 phone calls. 97% <laughs> attendance. Wow, she was fixing up her new home. Completely. 43 hours on the phone. Averaging 67,000, but took it to a whole new level at 97,000, which is $9,000 in commission plus her base of $2,600. She made $11,000 last month, $75 per hour. But to do it in a tough year like this, um, already over 100,000 for second year in a row. Let's add this another big check on top of that. Best month ever, third month in a row. Let's get it, Jasmine Sepulveda. Uh, no, no wave, no eye contact. <laughs> Congratulations. All right, first place finisher, selling over 100K by herself for the third month in a row. 92% attendance, over 1,000 calls, 54 hours on the phone, another $10,000 in commission. Add that to her base, it's $13,000 in one month, $98 per, per hour. Just like I have goals, like we wanna do 1 million a month, you know, we're at 600 but I want to get her to 200K a, a year. And I was doing a little bit of math. This is her three, third year now over making over 100K, and she has seven years before that. So if you add everything up, we're going to get to a million dollars pretty soon, something that I could be really proud of, we could, we could be really proud of, to say, hey, you know, over a course of my employment, obviously, to get to a million dollars earned. But once we do that, then I'm moving on to having her get to the next million dollars because the pace is getting faster. So that's something I'm really excited about. Yeah, with her skills, loyalty and commitment, that's something I believe we could do. Age of months for 62 months in a row now. Best month ever, three months in a row. Let's get out for Laura Martinez. <laughs> <laughs> All right, unbelievable. Any, any comments on how uh, these last couple months are going for you guys? Any words of wisdom you guys want to share to the rest of the team? Stay busy. Stay busy? Yeah, busy is good, right? able to handle the business, you know, able to tackle on more, you know. Your availability is your best ability, you know, just being here and then also just being active, just being busy, you know, something to do, there's always something to do, if there isn't, tell me, but the activity is making you stronger, it's making you learn faster, so staying busy is really as simple as it is, that's a great way to say it, it's the key to um, winning here. All right, and we got the Hustle Award for November 28th. 2022, we got three nominees here. We got Jasmine in this room here. Third in attendance, first in phone calls, fourth in phone hours. And then we have Blanca here, 
a nominee first in attendance, second in phone calls, third in phone hours. And then the third nominee is a two-time winner of this award, America, third in attendance, third in calls, first in hours. Very close, but the 2022 November Hustle Award goes to Blanca. <laughs> a little bit of pause there. All right, great. So that was our great month here. And now I want to talk to you guys about what I want to end this meeting with is our identity. OK, something I haven't talked about, right, our identity. So I'll show you guys a little bit of story. Um, this is the story of me and my son, Derek. He's eight years old. Um, and he got in trouble the other day because one of his friends told his mom that he was using the F word. So that mom told Risa, and he was in trouble that day. As well, he should be. Do you, do you guys, is that bad for you guys? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, that's understandable, right? Yeah. Way too young. Uh, and then, you know, we were playing video games. We were playing FIFA, soccer, and he's pretty good at that game. You know, he always beats me. But for some reason, I got lucky and I beat him. And he's pretty competitive. And it was around bedtime, so uh, it was like, okay, time to go to bed. And he just lost, right? So he was like, ah, you know, I mean, do you guys kids do that sometimes? Yeah. So he was just in a bad mood, and then they were going upstairs, and he was like, this is fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. That's funny. That's kind of not funny. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> but she, she was mad, and she was so mad, she was like over it. She was like, and then when it gets to that level, it's always my turn. You know, it's like, you're going to talk to Dada. And he was like, I was like, first of all, son, you ain't even saying it right. <laughs> no, but I looked in his eyes and I was like, hey, you're never going to forget what I'm going to tell you right now. Do not forget what I'm going to tell you right now. You are smart. And he was like, okay. But I was like, and you know I know you're smart. I guarantee you you're smart because you're my son and I'm super smart. Oh, my God. And Risa was in the corner like, where's this going? And I told him, does using the F word help you in any single way? How is using that word smart? Did you get anything out of it? You got your Pokemon cards taken away. You're lucky you've been able to play this game. She's mad at you all day long. You just had a terrible day. How is using that word smart? And I know you're going to say your friends use it. But because I'm competitive, I'm using this angle. But when your friends say it, think that they're stupid. And you don't want to be like them. You want to be better than them. Because I know for <laughs> sure, Derek, you're fucking smart. And we saw this like in the corner like, you know, because I use that word to him. You guys get it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the whole reason I was telling him that because, you know, I want to shift his identity to thinking that he's smart because a lot of times our identity comes from our parents. And as parents, I think that's one thing that we have to do is let them believe in themselves because that's really a bad thing if you think you're not smart. Do you guys know what the definition of identity is? The definition according to Webster Dictionary is the fact or being who or what a person or thing is. Okay, so it's not what you perceive or you think. It's actually a fact. So how you think you are, what your identity is, actually becomes fact. And I believe in that because I've done this so many times where I've hired people. And every time I hire people, I always think like, okay, this person has all the skills, the communication skills. They know how to leave a voicemail. They know how to talk. They know how to write an email. They know, they know how to follow up. And they have enough uh, learning ability to become able to become a successful insurance agent. You have all the tools. But for some reason, they just don't get there. And I figured it out. I was like, wow. They just don't believe they deserve it. Self-doubt, sometimes even self-sabotage. Mm -hmm. Like, why did, you, did they do that? They fundamentally believe that they didn't deserve to win. Because I, I would say the number one reason why people don't win is because they just don't believe they deserve it. Okay, so I want to tell you guys that how to increase our own identity for 2023 too, because we all change, you know. So how do we increase our, our, change our identity to someone who deserves more is what I want to talk to you guys about, okay. So the first thing, if you have doubts or negative self-talk, Where did it come from? But if you guys think about it, when you're a kid, right, or when you're a baby, an infant, you didn't you know, come out of the womb thinking, like, oh, I'm so stupid. Like, I'm such an unhealthy person. 
could be your parents. It could be your friends. It could be your ex-partners. It could be all kinds of people that you grew up with that put some type of information in your head that made you feel like, oh, because you're this, you can't do that. And then also society, too. And especially for your guys' community, I hate to say this, but it's, it's, I, I hate the way the society is programming this community and the other, other communities, minority communities. They don't want you guys to have power. They don't want you guys to have money. They tell you guys to go to school. And if you don't, you're dumb. But if you do, you still, nothing happens. <laughs> the programming is pretty messed up, OK? And I hate to see it. But another thing that is happening here is sometimes it's your own people, too. I want to change the story here, but does anybody like eating crabs here? Crabs? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You guys love it? Mm -hmm. Where do you guys eat it at? Boiling crab. Boiling crab? <laughs> <laughs> Wherever they have them. Where do they get them from? From the ocean. From the ocean. And then do you know who gets them? The sugar. They're called crabbers. Oh, crabbers. Oh. Yeah, crabbers. crabbers. Now, these crabbers, though, that I'm talking about, they actually do them one by one with bait. Oh. OK. And then they get these crabs, and then they put them in a little bucket. We had our best month ever, so we got to <laughs> treat, treat ourselves. So what happens when they put in this crab, I mean, this uh, bucket here? Good, yeah, they probably know they're going to get bowled up real quick and then eaten. Yeah. Okay, so they if you... They wouldn't know that. Maybe their instincts, <laughs> oh. because it's not their natural habitat. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> I, I wouldn't think, oh, this is cool. I'm going to stay here. And then, you know, they kind of know something happened here. Anybody here energetic and ambitious? You guys energetic and ambitious? Very. Yeah. Okay. Then what would you try to do? Get out. Get out. Get out. Yeah. Somehow. Somehow, <laughs> right? Like yeah. <laughs> but this, do they even have a brain? <laughs> it's natural instincts probably, but you know these crabbers, they don't even put a lid on there. You know why? Because they're not going to get out. They can. Well, they physically can get out, but they know they can't get out. You know why? Why are the crabbers not putting a lid here and not worried about them getting out? Just because they're confident that they caught it? Yeah, but they, 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 they have it in the bag. They have it in the bag. They can get it again if it comes out. No, they they actually can't make it out. Because it's another crab. Oh, tearing it down. It's another crab tearing it down. The crabber knows the other crabs won't let one out. Oh really? Really? The fisherman knows the other crabs won't let one out because they're always dragging them down. Oh. oh. I didn't know. That's so sad. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's like hey, if I'm dying, you're dying with me. That's how the community is sometimes. It's pretty messed up. And I'll tell you guys, there might be some crabs in your guys' life too. Because I've had crabs in my life when I became really ambitious. People who look just like me, who grew up near me. It's a lot of times due to insecurity, like, wait, I don't like myself. So if you're winning, if you're out there free, then it'll make me feel worse about myself. I'm going to put you down here. It's a really messed up situation, but that's where a lot of times these self-doubts come from. So really audit yourself when you guys have friends and you guys tell them, like, hey, I want to be healthy or I want to do this or I want to go hard and work on the Saturdays and if people say stuff that are trying to pull you down, make sure you know what's going on there. Unfortunately, some of your friends, some of your family members, they don't want to see you win. Okay? And it's, I know it's hard when it's your own family. Okay? You just don't have to kind of... Um, you can't cut them off, but you kind of have to like, okay, I get what's happening here. Okay, I'm going to listen to you, but not like really like let it get, get to me. But if it's a friend situation, then, you know, it's, for me, it would be easy like, all right, I'm going to talk to this person ever again. All right, number two. All right. So the society is brainwashing us. So what we should do is brainwash ourselves. You tell yourself who you are. What are some things that you want to tell yourself? What, what's a, a good identity to have? I'm a successful person. That's the identity that I have. Okay, I'm a healthy person. Okay, I'm an honest person. I'm a hard worker. I'm a hard worker. I'm a loyal person. I'm an honest person. I'm a good father. I'm a good husband. I'm a good son, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These are all identities. Okay, and once you have identity, then you know you're going to how to act accordingly. This will never happen, but if I was a vegetarian, if that was my identity, it makes your decision making so much easier. Because I'm not going to be thinking, like, should I eat a T-bone steak for breakfast? <laughs> you already know that, right? So if I say, hey, I'm a successful person, then I'm not going to be thinking, like, oh, I'm going to blow all my money on cars gambling. or gambling. Yeah. 
<laughs> right? So I'm not going to do that because my mindset is that I'm a successful person. So have an identity and then act accordingly. Now, this is going to really help because for some of you guys, if you guys are like, okay, I'm really wanted, if you're in a decision making stage, like, oh, what should I do? You could be like, okay, well, in this situation, the sales situation, or this type of situation, like, what would Laura do? What would Jazz do? If you have real life examples, that's a good one. Like, even before, I want to say, hey, I'm a owner of a multi million dollar business that has 15 to 20 employees, like, even before. Then I was thinking, like, okay, what type of person would that type of person do right now? How would they treat their employees? What type of marketing systems would they have? And then I have the identity first, and you could almost work your way backwards of thinking what you need to do. It could be a fake character if you want to. <coughs> this, this is where, you know, what would Jesus do worked out so well in the Christian faith because that really helped people act the way they should, okay? But you could do that with yourself because, okay, what would someone who's making $100,000 do here? What would someone who's making $200,000 do here? Would they be calling off? Would they be following up? If you know who you want to be, you know what you need to do. So I just want to sh share with that with you guys uh, some of the things that, you know, 2023, my recommendation is to have an identity of yourself as a successful person, as a healthy person, and as a happy person. And once you have that identity really deep into you, then you're going to act that way because your identity does become fact of who you really are. And then number four, okay, this is for everybody because I'm making it sound easy, but it's still not easy to just change your identity all of a sudden, like all of a sudden, like I have self-doubts, but now I don't. It's not that easy, right? So what do you think is the key to all this coming true of changing your identity? Work ethic is what really proves that, okay? Because try putting in so much work, work as hard as you can, and then see how you feel about yourself. Like, I get here sometimes on a Saturday, and it's before 6 a.m., and I park my car, and I literally see no other cars in the whole building. I don't even think the security guards are there. And it's pitch, <laughs> pitch black, and I'm walking into the office, and I'm thinking to myself, like, dude, I better become rich. <laughs> you know? So I just want to tell you guys that if you put so much time and so much effort into becoming who you want to be, it will be unreasonable for you not to become that. It just wouldn't make sense if you know what you want to, who you want to be, and then you put so much time and effort into becoming that person, there's just no way you won't be that. So pick who you want to be and just put your, all your effort and time in it. And the best thing about work ethic is when you put so much work in there, you start feeling you deserve it more. I put all that work in, I freaking deserve it. I want to acknowledge you guys for some of you guys being extremely hardworking and being moms and uh, ha you know, being great at your outside life. There's a lot of things going on in your guys' life, but work ethic is the key to feeling that you deserve more. So put in the work because like Jasmine and Laura has showed us, it just comes down to that, like what you do here. With the more activity you do, you're just going to get better and better at this job, and you feel like you deserve more, and that's going to attract better things coming in your life. And then I just want to end this also with, um, you know, the internal game of, you know, believe in yourself, and, you know, you guys have to come up with identity, like, I can't do that. I can't also do the work for you, okay? But there are people in your life this isn't probably real life. Real crabs don't do this. Well, what are these type of crabs? What are they trying to do for you? Crab pull you out. They're trying to pull you up. I could tell you uh, I've been very fortunate. This is just by luck. You just have no control over this. But my parents didn't get me anywhere close to this bucket. We're, we're not even getting really close to this shithole. So they pulled me out real quick from the get, and I was off to a good start. Now, not everybody has that. I get it, you know. But you guys have some of these people in your lives, then make sure you appreciate them. Uh, because we only get a few in our lives. Okay? And as an office, this is what I want to see happening. This is where we're lifting each other up. Okay, because what's the alternative? There's companies like this. You're not getting out. We're going to be broke together. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not good for business because there's no way you could be successful in an unsuccessful company. So I'm just telling you guys, okay, we're not competition. We're Team. collaboration. Okay. It's not competition. It's collaboration because that's been a story of my career is the more people I've helped, <clears throat> I've helped myself. 
Okay, so I just want to have a culture here of us helping each other, pulling ourselves out, helping each other get better, and then, um, you know, me personally, okay, again, there might be only a few people in your lives, I want to be one of those people that is lifting you guys up because that's my job. You know, I take my job very seriously. So I'm helping you guys, pull you guys self out, have the right mindset, get the right training, get all the tools you guys can um, because, you know, I really feel that we all deserve more, okay? And you guys deserve more. So you guys going to come up with a new identity in 2023? Do you guys feel like you deserve more? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go out there and get it. 2023, new identity. Let's get it, guys. Thank you.